7.02 p.m. It's 7.02 p.m. Um, we have four members. Is that right? Hold on. Hetty is in the... Why is Hetty in the... Hey, Hetty. Hi. Okay. It's all of us. One, two, four members um, in attendance. It's a quorum. Um, I will call to order this meeting on November 4th of the Amherst Historical Commission. Uh, this public meeting of the town of Amherst Historical Commission is being conducted. <laughs> Uh, via remote participation, members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort has been made to ensure that the public is adequate, can ac adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Uh, a hyperlink to the hearing has been posted on the town's online calendar. Um, and this meeting is being recorded for future viewing. Okay. Let's see here. Pull up our agenda. And we have um, approval of the meeting minutes, item one. Do we need to vote on that? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so I uh, motion to approve the meeting minutes. Do I have a second? I'll move, I'll move that. So Hetty, is that yes? Yeah. And, and, and Antonia? Yes, yes. 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 And Robin? Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. Um, announcements is next on the agenda. Madeline? Hi. Um, I'm not feeling very well, and I'm hoping I can bug out. If that's okay, I think there'll still be a quorum. Um, and uh, okay, just to let you know that. Okay. Does that is there still a quorum? I think Jacinta? there is. Yes. yes. Okay. Thanks for stopping Thank in. You. Feel better. Thanks. Thanks. Feel better. Thank you. Hi, Eddie. Okay. Um. Well, Jacinta, you said you may uh, you'd like to introduce or Nate, yeah, the, our new planner. Yeah, so this is Walker, everyone. Walker started with us, I think, last week, actually, or maybe two weeks ago now. Time is really fine. Yeah, two weeks. Been two weeks. <laughs> two weeks ago. Um, so she is the new planner who will be working with Nate as the staff liaison. I don't know if you wanted to introduce yourself and say anything more, Walker. I'm just happy to be here. I come from, I was a planner in Orange. I worked at the Historical Commission there, so I have experience Um and I'm excited to be working with you all. So nice to meet you. Great to meet you. Nice to have you. Yes, Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Um, any other announcements? We have had the we had the section 106 hearing. Um, Hetty's not here. So we may want to really review that better next time, but um, I can give a just a little update on that. Um, so we had uh, there was a hearing for the Jones Library um, 
for the Section 106 proceedings. They just had consulting parties come, um, just, um, just a listening session for consulting parties. And um, present were the, the library, the town, um, and like Bob Pyrant, who is the town, the representative from the town. And I'm not sure if I'm mispronouncing his name um, because the town is the lead agency. And so they are orchestrating the section 106 process um, and they make the decisions. So even though, yeah, so, okay. But also present was the advisory council of historic preservation. So they came and that's a national group who attends meetings if there's a, a finding of um, adverse impacts to historic properties. So they they attend if there's like an issue and they were very surprised to see that the MHC was not present. I know Robin, you don't have to, you can recuse yourself from this conversation, but they were um, surprised that MHC did not attend um, as the State Historic Preservation Office. So it was a little concerning to me that there this meeting wasn't really um, there. Yeah, the, the MHC wasn't there to sort of represent the interest of and to sort of explain why they had um, written these letters and to kind of come up with a solution that would result in no impacts to the historic property rather than just jumping into the uh, mitigation process, which seems to be what um, uh, how the meeting kind of was 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 going. So I'm not sure what else is happening. I haven't had any updates on that. So um, that's about it. But maybe we can get uh, an update, I don't know, from the town on that meeting. Nate, what do you think? I don't actually I don't, I don't have an update. I was on a question. Are you is the are the consulting parties meeting again? No, we haven't had any communication from anybody since then. There was, yeah. They discussed like mitigation strategies but it was very just general and i that like was alarming to me because i don't want it to just be a i, I don't want this process to just become a a consideration of mitigation because it should be a consideration of it avoiding the impacts first like changing the design to um kind of um, in response to MHC's letters rather than just saying, okay, there's an impact, like let's think of a documentation effort to to make, you know, as a mitigation strategy. I don't know. These are just my updates. <laughs> I don't really have a solution. Um, but yeah, that would be nice. I would, I would appreciate kind of understanding more of what's going on. Um, are there any questions about that or yes? Um, Nate, could we, could we ask the as a consulting party, can I like communicate more to figure out what's going on? Like, can I ask yeah, the town? I, I would have, I would have thought that you would have had like a series of meetings, kind of tentatively scheduled, not just have one and then be, you know, have your and have that be the end of the process. And so, uh, usually, you know, the one hundred six process happens earlier in a project, so you can, you know, figure out do you have a change in design, you know. A different plan to not have impacts and then if, if not then you can figure out how to 
mitigate or, you know, how you um, go through that process. So, you know, I, yeah. I talked to Bob, I can talk to Bob, or I think Madeline as a consulting party, you and Hetty or you or yourself could email Bob and just ask for an outline of the process. I, I was assuming that, you know, like I said, you'd have had a series of meetings, you know, maybe like three or four tentatively scheduled until you could come to, you know, a resolution with all consulting parties. So I don't, I don't really know where. Yeah. That. Cause you know, I do this professionally. So like in an adjacent way, not exactly, but in my experience, a state historic preservation office is like central to this process. They require redesigns, you know, if there's an adverse impact, it's a whole process of considering like a new design rather than just kind of jumping to this next stage. Um, so, and because it's, it's HUD, that means the lead agency can be the town, which is unusual. Usually a lead agency is a federal agency, but HUD is like one of the only um, federal agencies that can delegate um, that lead agency role to it, the local town. So sometimes things might get um, kind of lost along the way because it, the, the local town doesn't know the process as well. Okay, then I'll follow up with Bob. Um, okay, any other announcements? I'm looking forward to this barn preservation presentation we have as the next item on the agenda. Um, Jan, Mark, I am gonna mispronounce your name. <laughs> Mark Ward. Um, is here, former chair of the Historical Commission before I moved here. So we overlap for like a week. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. Good to see some of you again, some of you I've never seen. Hi, Jan. You want me to just dive in? Yeah, go for it. That'd be great. Okay. So um, I served for seven and a half years, and those of you who were on the commission know that one of my concerns was the loss of barns in the area. And after I went off, Robin, Hetty, Jane Wald, and I have met a few times, and I keep asking, what's going on with barns? Aren't we going to do something about barns? And there just isn't time. So finally, I said to Robin, okay, we're going to sit down and make a list of things that need to be done to get something going on this, and I will start the process. So we came up, oh, always my cats, sorry. We came up with a few things that needed to get done and I've been going through it. So let me just give you a, a sort of general idea of what we're thinking are either things we have to do or we might want to do that would help uh, raise awareness about barns. And then I'll tell you what I have done. And um, I might at that point share my screen and show you a few documents I've created. So one of them was to write a statement about um, why we love barns, why they need saving. Um, another was to determine maybe five to seven of the most iconic or beloved or endangered or something barns so that we would have um, a sort of uh, visual example list for, you know, if we do an article in the paper or if we send out notes or something like that. And we have a long list that we came up with quickly, but um, there are others, for instance, Hetty just wrote to me right before the meeting about the Black Oak, Black Walnut Inn in North Amherst. They have a wonderful barn and they're interested in preservation help. So this is great. This will be our first sort of client, if you will. Um, but we need to narrow that list down and make a decision at some point. Uh, another thing to do would be tell stories about the people who are behind those barns, the history of the barns, the families that built them, that used them, what their function was, how they're important to the uh, life and history of Amherst. Um, and I'm, I'm working on ideas with that. It's, it's a, that's a big project. Um, another is to create a list of resources for people who are interested in preservation and restoration. And that I have started to do, and I found enormous uh, enthusiasm from people. It's, it's extraordinary. I've contacted contractors and 
oh, um, various preservation groups, which I'll talk about, and um, even um, the Western Mass Field Service rep, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, um, engineers, everybody's very excited that we're thinking about doing this. And now I'm a little worried that they all think we really are doing this. <laughs> we have to keep going here. Um, but it's uh, it's been great because there hasn't been a single, you know, warning or un unenthusiastic response. So I have a list. It's a working list. I haven't finished because some people haven't gotten back to me or I haven't narrowed things down, but I have a list that we actually could, could give right now to the Black Walnut Inn if they if they want to get assessments. Um, Robin asked me to come up with an application form for the funds that have already been set aside by the Historical Commission from CPAC, by the CPA funds, to pay help people pay for assessments. Um, and I've created that and I'll show you that at the end. Um, another thing was to come up with repurposing ideas, and this is where we draw short straws because I ask this about every other organization that's worked on this much harder and they don't have any better ideas than we do. Um, you know, for instance, something like a wedding venue, it's a nightmare, apparently, with permits and noise and neighbors and all that. Um, it, uh, any other things that you want to do, it's going to cost the owners a lot to create that space if it's, you know, for a function. But... There, there's that, and there's also um, repurposing the materials, and it just depends on the owner and the condition. Um, there are some grants that we need to work on more. I'm hoping Robin can help with some of that, coming up with very specific grants. Uh, she talked also to me about getting a clean-out fund uh, grant so that people who want to fix their barn but can't because it's so jammed full of old junk <laughs> need help getting it cleared out so that an assessment can even be done. Uh, and that's something to think about. And I'm wondering if maybe if we look at the CPA monies and we start to use it, if they'd give us a little more next funding period and we could you know, roll that into it because it can't be that expensive. Um, and then um, the idea is to take the list of outbuildings that we already have, which I think came from the Pioneer Valley Preservation, whatever it's called. Um, and start to send out postcards to all the owners of outbuildings in Amherst. Um, and uh, the postcard would have uh, excerpt from the Love of Barn statement and um, talk about this money being available and talk about the fact that we have resources and then have websites that will give them the application, the list of resources and that sort of thing. Um, one thing I, I learned that, Nate, you might be able to know whether this has ever been proposed. Um, New, ha New Hampshire, is it Vermont? New Hampshire offers a type of easement that if a person makes the um, commitment to spend the funds to upgrade their barn, to preserve it, um, you know, fix it, save it, basically, that the town would grant them uh, what's called a discretion easement. And that would be that after they restore it, the taxes would be frozen at the original level and they wouldn't get an increased assessment because they fixed the barn. Um, and I think that's, I hadn't really thought about that, but she said that's often a reason that people hesitate to do anything because they're afraid it's going to improve the property and then they're gonna, their taxes are going to go up. So that seemed to me like something pretty cheap for us to do, pretty easy, and it would be something that we could offer as well. Do you know if anything like that's ever been discussed before? It's been discussed for, um, you know, we have something in place for affordable housing. We've talked about it for small businesses and things, but not for barn uh, preservation. So yeah, it's an interesting idea. I think it's something we could, look into more and talk to the assessor about. Okay, great. Um, and then another idea that I don't know who had it years ago, but I seized upon it and kind of made it mine uh, was the idea to complement the Historical Society's annual house tours with annual barn tours, which would raise awareness of owners, among owners, that their barn might be interesting or special. It might create a little bit of um, 
competition among barn owners to have theirs look nice or be on the tour. Um, a, there are people among those on my resource list who'd be willing to come and go to, you know, on the tour with people and talk about the history and type of barn and how it was used in the construction and the materials and that kind of thing to help various owners learn about their barn or about barns like theirs. Um, so I think that's something that we could start at some point. Um, annual is not much. Uh, some places do it monthly. Some people, um, some states do it by a location, like a, a region or a city. And they have all the ones in that done on a day. So like five or seven barns, something like that, if it's a whole state. Here, we're just talking about you know, our little town. Um, so it would be a matter of how we wanted to structure it, but I still think it's a good idea. And so did a lot of the people I talked to. Um, so the other thing was um, ideas to for people who don't want to do anything about their barn rather than ending up with demolition by neglect, um, asking them to uh, consider, and this is on the website of Historic New England, um, to, re to get a land trust situation where they retain ownership, but they have um, granted it to Historic New England to either create a museum or to preserve or something like that after they're gone. Um, it The donation doesn't get them the funds to repair the barn, but it gets tax deduction or lowers the property taxes while they're alive. And if it's an important enough property, Historic New England may take a uh, interest in helping it, you know, uh, stand at least long enough that they, they don't inherit a pile of rotten wood. Um, so that's something we can look into too, or we can at least propose to people who are really resistant at doing anything about their barn. Um, there are lots of uh, resources on state websites, um, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, ours, Massachusetts, um, that uh, provide different information about how to take care of your barn, what to look at uh, if you want to preserve it, where to look for funding, you know, what kind of barn do you have, how's it been used, that kind of thing, so that people can explore all that if they want to before they actually have somebody out and make the commitment to pay them and get an assessment and, a, and an estimate. Um, so that's kind of an overview of what I've been looking at. And I can show you what I've done. I mean, it isn't that much, but uh, it involves some time. Uh, is that of interest? Anybody want to, do you have any questions at this point before I show you stuff? Yeah, you can jump in and show us. Okay, um, can I share my screen maybe? You should have that capacity, Jan, yes. Is that, let's see. You should be able to share your screen. Just the, uh, um, the green uh, arrow. Yeah, let's see, this is, okay, it's one at a time. So I'll do the whole screen and then I'll just bring them in front. Um, okay, so can you see what I'm showing? Yes. Yes. I'm not seeing it. So, okay, so this is just a short statement about why barns matter. Um, I looked at some of the ones written by other places and got some ideas from them, but mostly I wrote from my um, experience in Amherst. And it's not very long. It's a little too long for a postcard, but it can be cut. Um, but this is the kind of thing I think we could run uh, on social media and in the newspaper to start um, getting people aware of the fact that this is even an issue, that we're we're losing them and we want to save them. Mm -hmm. And you'll see at the end... Um, um, Jan, I just want to jump in for a second. You have your voice recognition on. It's like typing yeah. as you're speaking. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. I was like, why is she <laughs> writing it while... <laughs> okay. Funny, I had turned it off. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it woke up when I screen shared. Thank you. I was wondering why it was getting longer. <laughs> Same. Um, so I, I, at the end, I say that we have this grant and um, that there are going to be these documents available of, of resources in um, the application. And then this is the application that I've put together. 
Uh, it's very simple, but it, you know, it asks them where it is and everything, and then what their sense of the condition is, whether they've already contacted somebody um, and how, how likely they are to undertake work. So we know how serious they are, uh, how much we need to lean on them or, you know, oops. Mm -hmm. Again, it took in voice stuff. Um, so a reminder yeah. that the program is set up as a, a matching amount so that the homeowners, that was one of the suggestions of the people that I talked to was to make it, um, a matching fund so that oh, the homeowner okay. would have a financial investment because otherwise you might get overwhelmed by people who just, you know, want an assessment report, but really have no intention of doing anything. Okay. That's a good idea. Okay. Um, Jan, I just have one comment. I, I, it might be interesting if, if the owners had a sense of when the barn was built to have that on the, on the application. Okay. I'm going to add that on there later. Um, the barn. Okay. Well, I also, the, I also think uh, that it's, I think the, the, um, just this, the use of the, the building is also so important. Like if, if it's actually just being okay. used, like if it has a function uh -huh. or if it's just vacant or, or if it did have a function. Like well, currently, historically, but historically and currently. Well, we know it had one originally, or it wouldn't yeah, have been built, right? I'm just saying, if, is it in use now? Is it being, or is right. it, or are they just trying to preserve something that's vacant? And yeah, that's a good point. Um, because actually, there's um, a tax break if it's still being used for agricultural purposes that would help pay for repairs. There's a, a state program for that. So that would be good to know. Um, That's good. Yeah. Okay, so I'll I'll change those. Now the resources is the is um where I had the most fun. So first I have uh, resources for general information about barns. So there's a National Barn Alliance. Um there's uh, this this book, which I took out of the library, preserving old barns which has a lot of information in it. And here's the thing I was talking about, if it's still actively used for farming, um, there's tax credits nationally. Um, and then state by state, the resources I mentioned, Preservation Mass, New Hampshire Preservation Alliance is there. I spoke to the deputy director who was really helpful and wants to help in any way she can. <clears throat> She's open to my coming back as much as necessary. Um, Connecticut Barns, these websites are tired. Um, they haven't updated them for a while. Apparently one guy was behind this and he's now stepped away. So they aren't being maintained, but there's still some really interesting information on there. Oh yeah, New York. I talked to New York. Um, this is their barn coalition. There's a lot of information there. The Vermont Agency of, of Commerce and Community Development has a preservation trust you know, under them. Uh, and a, a guy I contacted there was also very helpful, very supportive, and gave me quite a few names of people who are close to the, the state line who ended up, uh, all of them were interested in coming this far down to help with um, preservation work. Um, and that leads us into part two, which is local contractors. These are either builders or engineers or any number of things, but they all work in this um, assessment and some of the restoration work. The first person I contacted was White Oak Timber Frame, Jesse Brown. We've used him in the past to look at barns that we were um, debating about uh, demolition uh, permits. And he never wrote back. This, is, this isn't finished. This is still showing my marks. A check is I contacted him, a double check as they got back. Um, so I don't know what's going on with that, and I will try him again. Uh, Colonial Restorations was one of the best responses. Uh, they, he was recommended by the National Timber Frame uh, Society. Um, he is not a qualified engineer, but he's been doing this all his life, and his father did it too. And he's very highly regarded. He also is really interested in coming over here. He said he's tired of driving to Boston area. He'd love to work in Western Mass. He's near Sturbridge, so we're close. Um, why did this stuff keep getting in there? Um, he offered two things that are kind of astonishing. One is he'll do the site visit 
with um, a review of the barn, talking about the history, its type of um, function, assessment of the condition, and an estimate where he can talk about labor, but he says the materials obviously changed, so that would just be current at the time. But he's only talking about $295 to do that, to come over here and do that. And that would be rolled into the cost of the work if, if he were hired. Um, and he said he would be honest if the structure is not worth it. He's not gonna tell people you know, that work can be done and then it's, it's not gonna get anywhere. He also offered to come and give a PowerPoint presentation about different types of barns, why barns are important, you know, landscape um, preservation and that sort of thing. Um, and he would do it for the town, for the historical commission, for interested people, maybe for the first barn tour. I don't know, but he was very enthusiastic about the fact that we um, are talking about undertaking this. Um, the next person is this John Sargent coming out of Brattleboro. Uh, he charges $750 for a site visit. It includes all of um, the things that Brad Green would do with an assessment report, and he would provide photos um, showing exactly the work and then estimates about what the, um, the um, construction would cost. Now, that's a more typical price. Um, in New Hampshire, they hire people like him uh, who would, they would, the, the owner would only be charged 500 and they would absorb the difference. So it, it shows that Brad Green is very, very low. In fact, um, the woman in, at New Hampshire, um, what are they called? Preservation Alliance, uh, was really surprised when I told her that. And she said, he must really want to get work in your area. And that's his way of kind of getting in. Um, this is, um, this Headwaters barn is from Marlboro, which is, you know, also just an hour away, um, 500 for a full report. And it's also rolled into any cost of work undertaken. He, um, so is this, sorry, Jan, is this, so all of these, um, contractors could be contractors who would, would provide the services for the, the barn was um, our 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 grant funded project. Uh huh. Well, the, the, okay. the grant funded is the assessment. These reports. Right. The assessment for now, that. If, if somebody wanted to go ahead with their estimates and have the work done, that's separate. But they're providing both an assessment and an estimate for the work. That's okay. And for the assessment, we were saying that it the owner provides a match. Is that right? I don't remember all the details that's of our. Robin. That's what Robin just reminded me. I had okay. Yeah. Okay. So we could provide this list of regional contacts to mm -hmm. interested parties. Okay. Yeah. And then they could pick and they would, we would match, you know, if it's 500, we'd give them 250, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's um, great. And so then there's a couple others. Um, this guy, um, he's very high, um, but he's a full engineer. Um, as I know Jack Sobun did work in um, Buckland recently for the uh, Buckland Historical Society. Okay, well, he wrote back and said he was interested. When I asked him a couple of questions about, you know, what he would provide, how much it would cost, blah, 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 he never answered. So he's a timber framing expert, I believe, um, or he works with timber framing experts. He most... helped with their barn raising um, project. I guess they they most most of them are. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, that's what most of them are. The problem is, of course, if you have them on a resource list and you can't say how much they're going to charge and what they provide, nobody's going to pick them. You know, so I'll keep trying with him. Another person that John Sargent recommended besides Jack is this Dave Lanou. He has not responded. I guess I should have a check here. Uh, he, I wrote to him, but he hasn't responded. Uh, this place in Greensboro never responded. I get these off of lists of ones that other, like the Vermont list that are close by and look really good from their reviews and things. This place is in Essex, Massachusetts. He didn't respond. And even though he says he does this stuff, apparently he doesn't have an active license when I looked him up. 
Uh, and the Timber Framers Guild is the national organization I told you about. They have a Post and Beam is a company around here, but they only do new stuff. And Post and Beam recommended um, colonial restorations. So it's not a long list, but I think it's um, enough that people would have options and that, you know, they're, they're good people from what I've been told. Um, so that's what I have at this point. Um, and uh, obviously we need to move forward with a few things if we want to do this. I don't, I know that being on the commission doesn't always mean you have time for these side projects, but I didn't want to go any further until I had sort of approval and, um, I don't know, your thoughts about directions I should push because I can't do it all, but I'd like to start some of it, you know. Mm -hmm. So the status of that, I don't even know. We got the CPA funding last year. Is that right? And then, okay. So we're waiting to just, we need to implement it and just encourage barn owners to. Right. And Robin, is your sense that if we start to use it, we can renew that? Uh, it's not renewable in the sense that we'd have to go through the application process again. Well, um, I know, but I mean, you know, do you think it's the kind of thing that they'd say, oh, you know, you're using it, it's good, we'll do it again? Or or was it sort of a, well, you know? Uh, I think we asked for 15000 and we dropped it to $10,000. Um, I was just looking at my paperwork um, with the, I don't know if we're clear on the match amount. It was such a long time ago. Um, I think a match of up to $500. Um, and uh, I think it would just depend on what, you know, what the results were from this round. I mean, we described it, I think, as a pilot to see if, you know, these assessments resulted in, um, you know, some act somebody actually taking action to repurpose or restore their barn in one way or another. So. Okay, well, that's, yeah, I think it's only, you know, if, if 500, I mean, that'll take us up to an assessment of a thousand. Yeah, right? yeah. And it, but I, like yeah, I had talked to a lot of the same people that I was just looking at my notes uh, that you had. Um, and um, in my notes, I said that they had, they thought that, you know, kind of people hadn't adjusted their prices that much, that 750 was a more likely amount, but it sounds like maybe people are still kind of coming in on the low side, but I think, um, yeah, getting I th that information sheet is so great. Um, and to be able to refer people to, um, active, uh, active assessors, um, as such a mm -hmm. useful part of it. So, yep. Well, and do you think that, did we, I can't remember, did we specify in that, that it would only be used for the assessments or could we also, since there's enough, um, could we also match maybe the cost of clean out? To it offer that? Pretty clearly defined as an assessment. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe we can ask for that next. And I, you know, I mean, I would say that clean out is not a, it's not a preservation activity. No, but if it's required to get an assessment, I mean, you had been. Yeah, but it's that, I mean, that's the whole thing about what goes under CPA. I think that, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just have to, full disclosure, I've been saying on behalf of the Historical Commission, I'm contacting you, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm not saying I'm a member. Um, <laughs> I'm saying I'm a former member. It's kind of awkward because I'm not really speaking for the town at this point. Um, I'm just kind of doing this, you know, as an alum or something. Okay. So if anybody <laughs> asks you, who is this person? You can say, we don't know heard of her. A former chair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A former esteemed chair. Yeah, right. Whatever. <laughs> okay. That is so helpful. Um, thank you for pulling that information together. I would love to uh love to move this forward. I think I promised you um the I stripped the addresses from the outbuildings report and I haven't done that. So that is on my to-do list. Yeah, if you get me those, um I can drop a sample postcard and send it to y'all to look at. Um, and I'll send you, I'll finalize these documents as they currently stand, you know, I'll clean them up and send them to you um, as well. Um, for instance, Hetty could give the resource one to the, the Black Walnut Inn folk, um, along with the application if, you know, once I 
clarify that it's a match. Um, if they want to start the process, we'd have sort of a trial run if a way, in a way. Yeah, and I actually wanted to ask um, Nate and Jacinta and Walker now, um, who, what, I think one of the most important things at this point is at a certain point, I think we want the town to be managing the application um, in some manner. I mean, in the sense that who should, you know, who should people direct questions to? Is that something that would land in, um, in Walker's area at this point, Nate, or? It would be for Nate and Walker. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess my question would be if we publish, publicize this and we have, you know, like 30 owners, how do we prioritize? And so, oh, you, you know, I would just want to make sure that, you know, we have some kind of rationale for providing that, you know, funding. Um, you know, I, I, you know, just because, you know, it could be that a lot of people are interested. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure, but I just want to make sure we have a good process for that. And so, you know, I think staff could help answer questions, but I would think it would be actually the commission that, you know, would have some role in determining, you know, what properties are, would go through the assessment. Mm. I don't think you're going to get 30 people. I think it'd be amazing if we got four or five, you know, at the beginning of this. I don't know, maybe if we did some publication, public publicity and had a tour, maybe we'd get a lot. I, I don't know. Are we, are we allow, um, what if a, an owner applies and they have multiple buildings? What do we do for that? For example. That's a good question. Robin. You're muted. Maybe yeah. the assessment could be, you know, maybe that person would do it for one price once they came to the property. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, this is sort of, um, that this is beta testing, I guess, <laughs> all these questions. I mean, the one thing we did anticipate was that it would be on a, a rolling basis, that we wouldn't be doing a... Um, you know, a set deadline and reviewing um, applications all at the same time. So in that sense, uh, Nate, that would make, you know, prior priority would go by who got their application in first. But I mean, you know, would it, <clears throat> what if the barn was a 1960s barn? I mean, is there some criteria? Right. Or is it any, any outbuilding? I guess well, yeah. and that's true. I mean, that's, that's something to, to remind everybody of is that that is a barn and outbuilding program. So we have, um, you know, we have historic garages, we have um, um, carriage houses along with barns. So I found the application, we had some um, this section for them to fill in that would say something like, why do you think your barn is a historic landmark? for Amherst or something like that. So they'd have to sort of justify. I so mean, there would be a, hmm. yeah. Well, that would require us to review applications rather than just. Well, we have to anyway, right? Yeah, I was just trying, I had envisioned it more as a, like I said, on a rolling basis with just, you know, property by property until funds ran out as pilot project so that you wouldn't have to get into you know, deadlines and answering questions beforehand and competition. Um, I mean, there's nothing within the, I was trying to look at the proposal. I don't think there's anything in there that it might say, you know, it might define it as a rolling basis or it might just be suggested that way. Um, so, you know, whatever was approved, we have to go by what's in the documentation there. But I think we make it easiest on ourselves to start and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, we have to review the applications because we ask if they've already contacted somebody, how likely they are to undertake preservation work, I think could help us determine if we get a whole bunch at once, which ones we prioritize. Um, I think you're right. Yeah. It could be a 1960s building and it's more likely people are gonna wanna fix those because they're in better shape and probably more up to date. So I think we should say something about the fact that it it's supposed to be part of the historic landscape somehow. Maybe some question that, that makes them think about it. Um, I don't know. We're gonna have to review them. Otherwise, why have an application? 
Right? <laughs> Robin. <laughs> Muted. Yeah. <laughs> You're the one who asked me to write one. So what are we using? No, for? no. I, I mean, because we need that information. We need some formal way for them to submit a request for the funds. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's do it and see what happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We'll see how many applications we get. Yeah. So thank you, Jan, for getting us jump started yeah, thank here. Thank you so much. You so much for all your yeah, thanks, Jan. Um, I'll send these to whom? To Jacinta? To send out to the rest of you? That, sure. That be, is that the way to do it? Sure. I mean, be sure to okay. include Nate, because I this is my last meeting with everyone, guys. So. Oh. You oh. want to start thinking in terms of Nate and Walker. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was okay. just reading through the CPA proposal. I mean, I guess my only thought would be in it, we say, you know, historically significant barns or outbuildings. And I just, you know, I guess some of it would be, you know, who's making that determination, right? So, you know, property owner says, yeah, I have a, you know, historically significant barn. You know, does staff research that to determine that? You know, has the property already been inventoried? Is it, you know, to me, that's kind of the one piece where I'd want to make sure we have some clear guidance for owners, right? So that it's not can just... Use, can we use the, the process that we use for demolition delay? I mean, that's pretty much already outlined, right? Town decides if it's significant or not. If they can't decide, comes to us. Or we make the owner write a justification and we see how good they do. Well, how many properties are in this PVPC inventory? Could we just reach out to them? Well, there's a lot. There's a first. lot. First. Yeah. But they're all historically, I mean. Well, yeah, they've all been surveyed. I mean, I just think that, the, I mean, uh, is there an issue with using the demolition delay process? I mean, that is how we decide if a property is historically significant. That, can't we just apply the same process? Nate, I'm looking at you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it puts it on staff a little bit. Um, you know, it's just as CPA funds that needs to be used for a property or structure that the historical commission's already deemed significant to the town, right? So that, you know, typically as historic preservation funds, we wouldn't, you know, be funding, say, a modern barn under historic preservation. And so that's that's why I'm asking, you know, as part of the CPA language is for historically significant or or could be deemed historically significant properties or structures and so yeah i mean we could give that a try and if you know if it seems manageable in terms of applications that works if it doesn't then we could come up with a different process now would it help if in the in the title of everything i i add the word historic in front of barn so for instance application amherst ma historical commission and then historic barn assessment and preservation plan funds or something like that. So that historic barn is in there. Would that help? I would think so. Just that's what the funds are for. Yeah. I think we say barns and outbuildings. You know, I've had, a, you know, Robin had, you forwarded a, uh, you know, a property owner or two that ha had interest. And I, I feel like every so often there is someone who would benefit from this. And so mm -hmm. they, you know, they don't know even where to start. And so the hope was that we would have you know, some, you know, process and some funds available, you know, right. We see how long it would go. I mean, maybe this, you know, we had tried to put some kind of reasonable cost per, um, Madeline, to your question, I, I mean, I would almost say like per structure, not per property. So if, yeah, to me, if someone had, you know, multiple outbuildings or, you know, something that was a little bit more, um, you know, say a co more complex structure, I, I think we can be flexible on, you know, what the cost is per structure. We had some rough estimates in our proposal. I'm happy to go meet with anybody who's interested if they want, it, you know, to have somebody sort of walk them through this. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's, if that would be useful. Well, I mean, I it sounds as though then that we would like to have an application process and review them just quickly as a commission 
um, and not have staff, not have that be a burden on staff members, but for us to just review the one page application to to review whether it's significant, you know, historically significant building and whether we want to approve the funds. That makes sense. Where should this be sent? Because I should probably have that on the application where they deposit the application. Is it at the planning department? Is it sent to one of us? Is it, you know, what happens to it? I, um, you, know, you can put my email on there for now. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. You just forward it to us. Right. Oh, but if, okay, so but the idea, my idea was that this form would become um, um, PDF on the website. So could they then submit right from the website to you? There's a few different ways that could happen. Uh, let me, let me think about that. Okay. We could create an online form. You know, we don't necessarily have great uh, software I don't have for like fillable PDFs, but we have an online permitting software. We have to create an account, you know, that's how building permits or the demolition application is submitted. And then we could just set up, or we could set up an online form through our website, which is slightly different, but there's, there's ways to do it. And you have, um, you have a coordinator who does this stuff for the town still, right? We have a permit administrator who could who may be able to help. I mean, I I think for this, you know, I Walker and I would be able to would would coordinate some of this. Um, so maybe yeah. at this point, just have it mailed, or they scan it and email it, just to make it simpler. Yeah, I mean. Okay. You know, the online permitting software requires you to create an account and it might just seem, it might just seem like a little bit of a barrier if someone wants to yeah. have a simple form. Okay, I'll, I'll put that on the form. Um, so in order to get this information out, then uh, we can't have them go to a website to look at the resource page, the application page, the Why We Love Barnes page. Um, so how are we going to, if there's not going to be a website about the barn preservation program, can it go on the historical commission one or the one with the tours that we use or something? Yeah, I think we can make it a, a page within the historical commission. Okay. So, and who, who works on the website pages? Uh, staff does that. And how many months does that take? No, no um, criticism here. I'm just um, been around for a while. So I know this takes some time. I have yeah. access to the website now and I'm not super busy yet. So I can probably start working on that. Wonderful. Yeah, um, we can just review that barn, the why we love barn statement. Um, before it's that, posted. And then, okay. And then it could take it to attachments or links or something to these stocks. Right. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, I like the postcard idea just to mail it out to the inventory properties. Right. And the thing is, is on the postcard, I have to then tell them where to go to get more information. So if there's a website before we send the postcard, it would be great. Right, because then they could go there to look at these things. Yeah, or just a PDF like on a on the website. You could do a, a QR code. That's not too complicated. Um, well, there has to be a page on the Historical Commission website to host that. So if Walker, if you think you could create a page and then we could put these things on it, that'd be great. Um, and then mm -hmm. I address to put on the postcard, right? And I'll try and draw up a rough idea of what would go on the postcard. Obviously, it should have a picture or something of a barn um, and uh, and send that to you with these other docs to review for your next meeting, maybe, or something. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. 
Okay. Well, this, is, this is taking shape. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for the time. Thanks so much, Jan. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Jan. Thank you, Jan. Okay. Um, so our next agenda item is the um, CPA application submission updates. And we have Rebecca Frick here. Thank you for attending um, to talk about the Wildwood Cemetery um, application. I'll hand it over to you, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. So I don't know, you've seen um, my application and the slides. Do you want me to share them again? Or do you have questions? How do, how do you? How about, we can just, why don't we just, uh, everyone has seen the packet. Um, I think we just can just ask questions. If that's okay with everyone. Does anyone have questions uh, regarding the, oh, here we go. So yeah. you, the farmhouse received CPA funding two years ago, is that right? Last yeah, year? so uh, w yes, two years ago, and we redid the roof. So with that CPA grant, I had originally asked for the roof and the brick and mortar, and then I was quickly told that was too much and that I should split it. And um, so we we redid the roof. It looks great. Um, and now it's time to address the brick and mortar and the chimneys. Yeah, I mean, looking at the building after the roof um was replaced it just already looks so much better yeah yeah we're really happy with the way that turned out and just the yeah the drainage seems to have been improved is that right or yes around the base so as you can see it's been patched multiple times over the last uh, many decades and it's uh, the the mortar is starting to fail where it hasn't been patched so we we um, when we talked to the bricklayers they all agreed that we should just redo the whole thing and try and get a historically accurate mortar um, and the that small picture there on the bottom shows how deep it is that it, it's coming out you know, around all of the bricks. So soon they'll be falling out, I assume. Um, yeah. How much was your um, CPA grant two years ago? It was 102,000. Okay. Robin? Um, yeah, I just wanted to note that I think with this um, grant proposal, if it's granted, uh, because the previous um, CPA grant triggered the preservation restriction, we will be doing a, a Secretary of the Interior Standards uh, review of the project before it goes forward. So um, that will help ensure that uh, that the contractors have the right techniques uh, for historic uh, preservation to meet the Secretary of the Interior standards. Okay. So have there been any uh, significant kind of changes to the building since the 20, 20, uh, two years ago, whatever that was? Uh, well, we had the mini splits uh, that work done, but you've seen, so you took pictures. Well, Robin took the pictures and you came and looked at the outside. So nothing has happened uh -huh. since then. Um, yeah. Okay. And then we are starting to be much more public. Um, we have our fall programming happening. We had 60 people come to our bagpipe stroll, which was about 30 more than I was expecting, which was a lot of fun. 
the death cafe, we actually had um, twice as many people as could fit in the room. So we have a waiting list. Um, so we'll be doing more of those. And then we have a winter solstice stroll in December. And people seem to be pretty excited about seeing uh, the cemetery and the farmhouse. And so I think it'll be a nice um nice place for the town to add to its uh, places th of places to go and things to do. So we're excited about that. Great. Robin, when you say, so these standards, I assume that the bricklayers are used to that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that we've really, I mean, I, I was uh, recused from, uh, the commission when we were doing the Jones Library, but you know the commission is starting to learn to understand its role there. Um, and again, it's just uh, we would be looking at the proposal by the contractor uh, and making sure that all the standards are in line with it. And if not, having a discussion with the contractor about um, what would need to change in order for that to happen. It's really more of a reminder to the commission and myself than anything else. <laughs> Okay. And then um, the I think there are, there's a requirement for the CPA that um, if the property is not on the National Register, which is not right now, um, that uh, the commission documents that it's a historic resource, uh, which we did previously. So we must have for their past grant, we must have some sort of letter uh, that we can revisit. Um, and just confirm that for the CPA committee, but that's not really an issue. What, not a uh, new issue. What's your question, Rebecca? No, the letter. I don't know what you mean by oh, that. Uh, it, it's something that the Historical Commission has to do that we need oh. to certify. Since, since the property is not on the National Register, uh, we have to certify to the CPA committee um, that the building is a historic resource. It's, you know, okay. one or the other, it's either the historical commission or the national register. Um, and so since you were approved for a um, CPA grant already, that process has been done once before. So it's essentially just the same process, nothing to worry about, but. All right. Great. Okay, I don't, any other comments or questions? Yeah. Now, I it's my understanding that we have to vote to accept the preservation restriction for Wildwood. So this is for the previous work. It's something that um, you know we you know we developed a preservation restriction modeled after the Massachusetts Historic Commission's template. It's the same one essentially that the commission agreed to for the Women's Club, and so. Uh, you know, there's a few conditional clauses there. And, you know, what we do have is that we keep some amount of the CPA funding until this restriction is agreed upon and approved. And so, you know, essentially the project's been done for a bit. And now, you know, I think we're still withholding 5% or some percentage of the, of the CPA funding until this restriction was um, in place. And so the cemetery association has signed it and has agreed to it. And if the commission votes to, you know, accept it, then we can process the final invoice. The idea would be that eventually this would be reported after it's signed, uh, you know, recorded against the property and runs with the property. Okay. Shall we just address this now? I don't see it in the agenda anywhere else. So. Yeah, no, the, um, I was going to have it on unanticipated, but as part of this discussion, we could. Um, oh, got it. Okay. And so it has, you know, it's pretty similar to the one that the Jones Library had too. It sets up a review process, as Robin mentioned, with the Secretary of Interior Standards, uh, as information about, you know, as you're looking through, like, you know, insurance or damage or other things. Um, and then the Rebecca sent me today the exhibit. So that's all available. It just has to be compiled into one document. So it's in multiple 
you know, in documents now, it's not attached to this PDF right now. Yeah, I think Jacinta was just showing the pictures that I sent today. Yeah. And then Madeline, um, I sent your building description. Okay. Yeah, I think this is exactly like the women's club because I had to white out women's club. <laughs> yeah, it, I know. I um, our attorney worked on both of these, and um, you know, now I have to uh, you know adapt it to every other um project. So you know, most of this is going to be you know very similar to every project. We you know a few things change, but otherwise it's this um you know same document that we'll see for a number of CPA projects. Yeah, we um we hope this is all set so that we can get the roof pay the last roof payment before our next fiscal year. Okay, are there any questions about this or comments? No, the, only, members? the only question I have is is do we go to the planning office to sign it or to the clerk's office? You come we to the so I, I, you come to the planning department and then, you know, we'd ask for a copy of an ID or something. So then we could get the signature notarized, but you know, the woman's club, that's everyone came to the second floor and was able to sign it there. Um, so it'd be a similar process. Sure. Thank you. I just, uh, other times we went to the clerk's office. So I just want to, I wanted to be sure to know where to just show up. Sure. And I, I do want to say thank you to both Robin and Madeline uh, for doing this, for helping me with this. I couldn't have done it by myself. Or I could have, but it wouldn't have been as good. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> You're doing an amazing job, Rebecca. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm, I feel like I'm chipping away at something that has been uh, a little neglected over the decades. So. And I'm hoping with the the portion of funding uh, we're going to put in that we'll be able to take care of some of the exterior work. So uh, we have the old shutters. Um, I'd like to get the electrical lamps, you know, painted and the windows all need to be painted, things like that. Do you have a date? Or does the town have a date for um, Rebecca's presentation to the CPA? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Yeah, there's still, you know, uh, this was one CPA proposal. The Jewish community of Amherst submitted another one. And then there's the two town, two, you know, town ones. So, uh, you know, I know that there's a few pretty big asks of CPA uh, in terms of all the other proposals, but you know, originally the thought was most of the proposals could be funded, you know, in whole or in part. I'm not sure where that stands right now, um, just given that there's a few big ones that the committee has to discuss. Okay. Do, do we have to vote on a recommendation to support this CPA application? Yeah, the JCA was gonna come in December. Um, they're hoping to come in at, at the December meeting you could take a vote now. Um, you could, you know, I think usually the CPA committee tries to complete their process by the end of the year. So, I, um, but I haven't, I know um, they had questions of applicants that were due. Was it just Friday? Was it just last Friday? Yeah, I uh, think so. Yeah, so then I'm assuming they'll be meeting soon and they'll start meeting almost every week to go through the proposals. I'm just looking. Yeah, the seventh is our first meeting. Yeah, I was just gonna do that. So, um, but I can't remember which. I don't know if there's a schedule for which proposals when. Yeah, I have that up. That's um, we're on the fourteenth. Thursday. Oh, okay. Good to know. Right up. Yeah, we don't. We don't have to. Uh, I think we should address the preservation restriction for the 
previous um, grant, um, if we want to vote on that tonight. Madeline, where did you see the schedule or the meeting for this? Issue? I got an email three days ago uh, on November 1st. Let's see. I'll forward it to you. Yeah, usually they post their schedule on the web page, but I don't, I don't see it, so I admit. Rebecca, did you get this email too? I didn't. Oh. Because we, it says, um, I think uh, November, f do, do you have it, Nate? Uh, Nate uh, November 14th at 7.20 p.m. is, um, here, I'll, I have your email, Rebecca. I'll just email it to you. Okay. So uh, this is by Zoom? This yeah. is, yeah, it's an email from Holly Drake. Yeah, but the meetings are over Zoom. Oh, yeah, it laid out the schedule. It's funny, I hadn't. Um... You know, I don't think I got that one. Can you send it to me as well? I'll just sure. Uh... Yeah. So um, the oh, whole meeting starts at 620, that Rebecca C. Oh, here we go. No, I've got it. I've got it from Sam. It starts at 620, but I'm on at 720. That's what it says, yep. but I think you yep. need to be. Ready before that. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so shall we vote to, uh, to accept the restriction? Um, the restriction. So moved. Third. Yeah, okay, so um, Pat, I think you're muted. Sorry about that. Yes. So you, it's a yes, and a yes from me. I think that's everybody. Is that sufficient? <laughs> Yes, yes, I was moving, but yes, right. <laughs> okay, I need to learn how to do that. Okay. Great. Okay, great. So that's approved. Um, and we will all have uh, need to go into the, to sign that restriction. Um, next on the agenda is mid-century modern building survey from me. Um, Thank you, Rebecca. Yes, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, I I just answered a few questions for the CPA uh, committee regarding that, and they just wanted to know if there were any restrictions on properties that were in the inventory. I said no. Um, and and they also wanted to know how we would choose which buildings were inventoried, and I just sort of said um, that we would select properties based on their um, the development history of Amherst, sort of ones that highlight the mid-century development history of Amherst. So historically, and also those that are kind of architecturally noteworthy for mid-century architecture. Um, that's all. I, I I guess I will put together a presentation for the, uh, the 14th. But I, yeah, and Robin, you can help me with that. <laughs> or I'll come to you with questions. Sure. Okay. Um, and then, okay, so our next agenda item is discussion of one to five year goals. Um, does anyone have any thoughts about their 
goals, their tasks that they've been assigned. Progress updates. I was, I've been reading our one year goals from last January. Um, if there are any, yeah, so I guess this coming January, we'll want to revisit those and um, maybe create that list on, with an understanding of our capacity for how much we can take on individually. Um, so just that understanding. But um, I think the barn preservation is exciting. And um, so unanticipated items. Nate. Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, Walker is putting together a letter of intent to the Massachusetts Historical Commission for their survey and planning grant. So we had the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission look at um, expanding or nominating three national register districts in town. Uh, that was a few years ago. And the, the nominations kind of stalled in draft form, in part because we ran out of funding and mass, the Massachusetts Historical Commission had a number of questions. And so, uh, you know, we're looking at the Dickinson district expansion as an application to that. And, it, you know, it also aligns with the preservation plan in terms of, you know, uh, you know, inventory work and research and public education. And so, um, you know, it's a one page letter that is due by next Friday to MHC and it's, it's in pretty good shape. And the idea would be to apply for, you know, submit a letter of intent. If we're accepted, then we would submit a full application due, I think in February. Um, but, you know, the uh, Walker has been in touch with Mass Historic and the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. We do have some planning capital money that can be used as a match. And so typically we have a, a difficult time coming up with a match for grant programs. Uh, and so we do have some money available for that. And it, it, it fits the priorities for the state and, you know, aligns with our preservation plan. So it's something that, you know, we'd like to submit and just, you know, we'll let, you know, let you know that we're doing that. If it moves forward, then we have, you know, more work to do uh, late, you know, in December and January to submit a full application. But. Robin? Um, so uh, the first thing is that I'll be recusing myself from any discussions around that particular item, uh, but also know that when I'm at work, because I do work directly with the survey and planning process, um, last year, we when I started working there, we cleared me to be able to sit on that committee with just a, I just have to do a public disclosure form. So um, just FYI, taking care of it. I'm, I'm both there and here. Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, great. Well, that would be great if we had that grant. I understand they haven't, this year's planning grants didn't really, um, there weren't any Western Massachusetts communities. So it'd be nice to represent. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to announce? Can I send the draft narrative to all of you or would any of you be interested in reading it before I submit it to MHC? I can just look look it over. Okay. And it's just a one page. Okay. Letter, I can email it anytime. Well, yeah, great. Um, well, yeah, it'll be, I look forward to working with you, Walker. And thanks so much, Jacinta, for being with us and helping us. Thanks. Are you staying in Amherst as a planner in Amherst or are you moving towards now. new pastures? <laughs> okay. No, I'm staying. So we'll staying. see you. We'll see you in the building. I'll be here. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I think that's everything. 
Um, do we have to um, set that meeting for a hearing or we'll just do that in email? Yeah, I and I wanted to basically. mention um, two things. There's, you know, a, a demolition application that was submitted and, you know, um, it's for an older structure on Belchertown Road. And, you know, it would need to go to a hearing uh, sometime this month. Pat, you're, I think you said you're not available after the 21st. Right. Uh, for a and then um, I think two people said they were available for Monday, the 25th. Uh, we would need four members available for a quorum. I don't know if the owners would be willing to extend past the required time frame in the bylaw. So we could always ask that the hearing be, you know, take place in December. They could say no, and then it would be constructively granted. There was a house fire there earlier this year. Um, and so they're looking to demolish the structure and actually rebuild a new, it's a duplex, a new duplex on the property. Um, but, you know, it's still, the building's still intact enough that the building commissioner thought it would could go through the historical commission review. And so if the 20, Monday the 25th works, that gives us time to get a legal ad. You know, if members aren't available, we'd have to consider another time. I mean, I'd be willing to meet during the day just so that we get the hearing in within the prescribed time frame um, without having to ask for an extension. I could do the 25th too. Yeah, I can too. Me too. Right, so that, yeah, and I think... Um, did Hetty? I don't know if Hetty has responded or if she said she could, but I'll, I can, we can ask She Hedy. said yes. Yes, yeah. And then um, it could that could be the one thing that comes up that evening. Um, the Jewish community of Amherst wants to come back before the commission. You know, they have a CPA proposal to um, restore stained glass windows, but they also, you know, we're mm -hmm. nearing completion on a preservation mm -hmm. restriction for that property. And they want to follow that restriction. Um, and they would like to do some work on their buildings, including maybe new siding and some other work. And so they wanted to do, come before the commission and then, you know, seek approval for some of those changes. And so typically we've done that at a public hearing as well, where the commission reviews the project. And so that could happen um, on the 25th or it could happen in December. But those are two hearings that would be upcoming for the commission. Do we want to pick a date for a December meeting? We could do that and also advertise it for, you know, with the Jewish community. I'm not sure they'd be ready for the 25th. So they had been thinking about it for December. Okay. Uh... I guess I had one question. So my, um for my one year goal was um, getting the sign for when there's the demolition hearing. Um, and so since that's happening, this month, um, I would guess I would want to get some sort of sign for that. Are there any parameters of what the town would want or standardize? Yeah, uh, email email me okay. about that. We're working on a sign system for um, recreation areas or for other things, and so we're, we okay. developed a template actually just pretty recently, so we can work on that. Do you want to propose some dates, Nate, for December? Is that? I mean, does, you know, is it, I mean, there's Monday, um, if we're meeting on the 25th, um, I'm not sure what, um, I mean, is Monday the I, I, 16th work? I don't know what's good for members. Um, it's a tricky month. I don't think I can the 16th. We do the 9th. I could yeah. do the 9th or the 16th. Actually, the 16th, um, I, I, I'm in another meeting, actually. So the shall, we, uh, let's, shall we set the 9th or? Um, yeah, the 9th. Would wanna, be uh, we can ask Hetty or? You could say the ninth, and then you know maybe if not that night, it could be the tenth on Tuesday, or you know sometime that week possibly. I think Mondays seem to be good for everyone. Everyone here. Let's do the ninth. I can. I can do the ninth. I can too. Uh, 
Uh, 7 p.m. is best for me. Better than 6.30. Me too. Okay, good. All right. Well, then. Is that everything? Um, how do we adjourn here? You could call a vote or you could just say the meeting's adjourned. You can This just say meeting that. <laughs> this meeting's adjourned. Thanks, We're good. Madeline, for taking the helm. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good, good night, everybody.